I think for me, what's been really, really powerful in this season is to cultivate a feeling of pride, being proud of myself for not doing and for letting certain safe people in my life witness me as really, really messy in my emotion and in my very raw feelings because that's new for me. So therefore it's growth. We are rounding out this conversation about the gap and it's been so fun to answer your direct questions and number one, to let me know that I'm so not alone in this gap season and the feelings that are so real when you're going through the transition of leaving one identity, stepping into your new up-leveled identity, which that part's exciting, but there is this in-between that can be really uncomfortable. And you know, the thing about the gap is to realize that I've experienced these continual gap seasons on my growth journey, and some are big, some are small, some are long, some are short. And I do think that the size of the gap that we're in is kind of going to depend on the level of transformation that you're calling in. And if you're like me and you're in a season that you you sense is a big up-level season, the gap is going to feel long. It's going to feel super intense. It's going to just offer you a lot of opportunities to look at your own growth. And so today we're gonna round this out by talking about how important patience is when you're in the gap. You cannot rush it. If you want all that the gap has available for you, and why would we waste this energy? It's so easy to think that we wanna rush through the lessons and just get right to the end, but I think especially for someone who's very wired to see a goal and map out a plan to hit the goal, because that is my default mode of operating, this gap for me has had the continual lesson of being a little bit more in flow, being a little bit more surrendered, not getting to see clearly how long this is going to be or exactly where I'm going. And it carries with it the most beautiful energy that is transformative for me. And I think that's the thing about the gap. It's going to offer you the opportunity to create the lesson and the breakthrough in the exact area that you need. So those of us that patience is a little tricky or you really love to have control, you're probably feeling me on this. You might have actually already turned off this episode because you're like, patience? No, no, thank you. Skip next. Tell me how to make it go faster. And I loved one of the first, it's not even a question, but I wanted to include her comment. Mary Lou De Los Santos said she's been in a gap for what feels like a couple of years. And she, she said she's just now starting to reap the benefits and making sense of why she had to make the decisions that she made. But I love this part. She said, I wanted to get to the end so badly. She was trying to rush it. And it actually made her remain in the gap for even longer. And I think it's so important to remember that sometimes the very thing that we think is going to alleviate the pain just prolongs it. That if we try to rush our way through the gap or, you know, for me, the way that looks is I can process things really, really quickly in my mind. So I just want to process it mentally and not need to feel the emotions and just be like, okay, great. I'm good. I learned the lesson. And what's been beautiful about working with the support of a therapist in this season and just incorporating some different modalities that I haven't incorporated before is it's it's forcing me to pause and actually feel things. And through the processing of the emotions behind the things that I'm being triggered by and the lessons that are showing up, that's where the real freedom and the real breakthrough lies. Instead of just trying to be in my head and just processing mentally and just trying to check a box that inevitably actually delays my true breakthrough, my true transformation. Because the thing to remember about a gap is that if you're in the gap, it is a sign that you are ready for the next level. You're ready for what's next for you. You're meant to step into a a completely different identity that is going to have so many things that you want, that you're conscious that you want, and so many things that you never even knew you could dream of. But it's going to come on the other side of 
unlearning and unbecoming a lot of the person who you are today in order to learn and become and integrate new parts of yourself that just takes time. That process does not happen overnight. You do need time to integrate. So I love what Mary Lou shared and just such a good reminder that the more we try to rush the gap, the more we prolong it. I needed to hear that. So thank you for sharing that, Mary Lou. I want to read this first question and it really kind of hones in on the patience piece. Tammy Bean shared that she just wants to hear more stories about how people endured the gap and had patience. It's so hard to stick with things when you don't see that immediate success. And what I was saying in the beginning about, I think if we are someone who's wired that way to give up when we don't see immediate success, you're going to be delivered the exact lesson you need in patience. Meaning you're probably going to feel like the results are kind of held back and you're going to have to sit in the tension that is the unknown for a little bit longer than is comfortable because it's meant to teach you the lesson of surrender. It's meant to teach you the lesson of patience. So I think it's important to know yourself and have that self-awareness to say, gosh, do I usually give up? Like at what point do I usually give up and lose my patience? And commit to yourself that you're gonna see it through. Create accountability for yourself if you know that you tend to do the, the cute quit like I talk about, the moment that it gets challenging or the moment that you don't see results. And this season, this gap season for me has been one of self-awareness to catch myself in my normal patterns and the ways that I was showing up before that got me the results that I, that I have. And not to say that I have to leave behind everything that makes me who I am, but a lot of my lessons, a lot of my growth have been on the other side of knowing that, okay, I would normally operate in this way. Maybe I would normally give up or I would normally try to overachieve and make up work for myself and I wouldn't sit in the stillness when the stillness was the thing for me because it was the new action. The stillness is what held my breakthrough, my lesson. And I feel like if, you're, if you've been in a gap season for a while, if you feel like you're kind of being dealt the same lessons over and over, or you notice that patterns are repeating and they're not really transforming, take a step back really observe yourself, observe what triggers are showing up. Like, where are you getting really agitated? What's at the root of that? What do you do in response to that trigger? And is there a reframe for it? What would be the opposite of showing up in that conditioned way? What would be the new action for you? So it's like, if someone has their typical way of operating is to kind of almost shut down and be so afraid or so overwhelmed that you're not taking action, then taking more action could be your new, new opportunity for growth. If you're someone like me who I like to avoid feeling by being in action, constantly doing. So the new action for me has been less doing, more feeling. And then making sure that I'm surrounding myself with the right kind of accountability, knowing myself well enough to know where I tend to cute quit and the ways that I go to sabotage is really important, especially if you are the person who overachieving and doing, being constantly in do, do, do mode is your way of avoiding yourself. It's tricky because my way of avoiding myself, my way of self-sabotaging is something that's praised. It's something that I get a lot of validation for. So most people in my life, unless I tell them, hey, here's what it looks like when I avoid myself, when I avoid my work, and when I'm trying not to feel, you will see me do X. And it's just like doing a lot. And to arm people in my life, my therapists, close friends who are on this journey with me, to call me out when they see me in that pattern Number one, it's really uncomfortable. You kind of don't want to give up that trump card. But number two is it creates enough accountability to help you break the pattern. And that's been really important for me because, again, if you're someone where your way of self-sabotaging and a pattern that actually needs to go if you're going to embody this next version of yourself is a pattern that you also have gotten a lot of praise and validation for, it's going to be a tough one to shift. 
But I think our breakthrough lies in catching ourselves in the patterns and the triggers, looking deeper at the wounds underneath them and doing some of that reprogramming work we've talked about in this series, and then taking the opposite action. And that opposite action is going to look different for every single person. I love the question that Karina Rodriguez submitted. And this is such a big one, especially in this online world where we're just seeing the highlight reel of people's life. I mean, even still today, like you're kind of seeing the highlight reel of me talking about this because I had to wait till it was like in a form where I could share it, where it made sense to me. I had processed it, but there have been some really, really messy moments when I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know which way was up and which way was down. I, I was totally at a loss of like my sense of security, my sense of self. That wasn't the time for me to show up and be talking about this, but I very much went through lots of seasons like that, prolonged seasons. But Karina asked, how do you honor this space, this gap without judging yourself or without feeling that pressure from society or the industry or the internet to already be this up-leveled version of yourself? How do you have patience with yourself when you're in the process? And what first came to mind for me is that it is such a powerful time when you are in it to connect with your community and connect with who you want to serve. You know, as much as, yes, I'm, I'm not showing up in the moments that I'm ugly crying and don't even know how to make sense out of what's happening and the feelings I'm processing, I'm not showing up in that moment because that moment is for me. That moment is sacred. That moment is a moment for me to hold myself. But I'm still very much in the energy of this gap. I'm still very much in the energy of how uncomfortable it's been and the grief that I feel and the sadness that I feel. And I'm able to connect with you in a different way than if I was sharing this from an even more healed place when there was no emotion. I mean, there's, I don't think there's ever no emotion, but when I'm more distanced from the emotion. So I think how you honor this space and how you relieve yourself from the pressure that you should just be it already is I do think we're supposed to talk about this. The way that I think what's given me the permission to just be in this season for as long as I need to be in it, and trust me, I've had plenty of moments where I want to rush through, is to surround myself with examples and reminders of people who've gone before me and to see the depth, the, to witness the depth of the transformation they went through and how long it took for them. But unless we're all willing to share what it's been like for us to go through these gap seasons, then we we're not going to have examples. So when it's time for you to share, and only you will know that, when it's time for you to share your story, even if it's just with a friend, I think it's so important to do so. And then if you're in the season and you're in that place where you're having trouble cultivating that sense of patience for yourself, it's to go in search of other people whose stories you can relate to as a reminder to ground you in the fact that whatever pace you're going at is actually the perfect pace for you. And actually your fastest transformation might happen by taking it slow. And that might be a new action. I know it has been for me. So the last one is such a beautiful question. I love this question so much. Kaylee Bowen wrote in and asked, how do I appreciate the person I am today? The one that will get me to the person I want to be tomorrow. How do you find value in the person you are today and the traits you have today without fast forwarding and just only living in kind of like the I wanted to say delusion, but it's like healthy delusion of the person you're becoming. And it's such a beautiful question, right? Because that is what it is to be in the gap is gratitude when you kind of like look back and see the person that you were and excitement when you look ahead and see the person that you're becoming. But I think for me, the answer really lies in grounding myself as much as I can into the present moment. Because it's easy for me to look back a ways and see how far I've come and have gratitude for that person. But it's a little harder for me to just be really present right now and think about like, well, what am I proud of myself for today? Because sometimes what I'm proud of myself for that day is that I didn't do shit. I just didn't do anything. 
Because what I needed that day was just to be in my feels. I needed to process emotion. I needed to completely become undone. And it's harder to be proud of myself in those days. Because again, when I think about like what's typically praised are the things that are like more shiny. It's the action. It's the doing. I think for me, what's been really, really powerful in this season is to cultivate a feeling of pride, being proud of myself for not doing and for being really messy and for letting certain safe people in my life witness me as really, really messy in my emotion and in my very raw feelings because that's new for me. So therefore it's growth. I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't know what patience looks like for you. I can't promise you that this journey is gonna be fast or slow or all I can promise you is that it's gonna offer you over and over and over again the opportunity, exactly what you need in order to change. And it does require you to slow down enough to sense those opportunities when they're being presented and then have enough space in your mind, in your heart, in your calendar, in your emotional bandwidth to lean fully into that lesson. Because the one thing I can say is that the more I resist leaning into the lesson, it'll just show up again. It's like it just changes outfits and it comes back to the front door like trick or treat. It's like the the kids that try to double dip on the trick or treating and you're like, no, it, you were just here. It's like the lessons will show up again and again in a different disguise until you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to meet you. I'm ready to see what you have to offer. I'm ready to lean fully into what you have for me. And I think the reason why I didn't do that for so long is I was more afraid of the discomfort that was unfamiliar than I was afraid of the discomfort that I knew. And the more I allowed myself to lean into the unfamiliar discomfort, it was sometimes more intense because it was, it was already discomfort but then you add uncertainty on top of it because I didn't know what to expect. But the version of myself I've gotten to meet in those moments is the version that is building this new embodied, whatever version I'm on, I don't even think it's 2.0, it's probably like 17.0 at this point, version of Lindsay that I honestly can say I love more than any other version I've loved and I've loved them all I'm just becoming so much more of the most authentic version of me. And so that's come from finding gratitude in the present moment. And sometimes the present moment is the messy one. Because if we can love ourselves there, we can love ourselves at every stage. But if we can't love the mess, we can't fully love the version of us that comes out on the other side and is achieving all of our wildest dreams. You don't get to love one without loving the other. And a big part of my lesson in this season has been to love the messy version, love her fully. And that is such a new experience. It's been beautiful. And I just really hope that you felt super seen in this series. I'm sure that we're still going to end up coming back around to this topic of the gap because so many of us are in it. We're still navigating it. It's going to kind of weave in and out of our conversations in, in this community because at the heart of what Powerhouse Women stands for is transformation. Whether you're doing that through a business, whether you're doing that through a personal development journey or your journey as a mom or a wife or just a human being who knows you're here for a purpose. But transformation is always going to usher you into seasons where you don't have a lot of clarity, you don't have a lot of direction, you have a lot of emotion, a lot of opportunity to change, but it's going to come at the expense of things that feel very comfortable to you right now. So thank you so much just for being on this journey with me and letting me know that I'm not alone. I don't think we're finished yet. I mean, I'm still recording this while I'm still very, very much in the gap. You're going to hear it later. Dear God, I hope I'm a little further along in the gap process if I'm being honest, but I've actually really settled in and I'm so much more willing to be present and be patient because I do not want to waste this energy. I don't want to miss what the gap has to offer me. So if you're still here with me, just pull up a chair. You know, we'll grab some snacks, 
Come along for the ride. You're not alone, but I don't want you to miss what the gap has to offer you either. So as hard as it is, it's easy to say it's hard to do. Be patient. Know that you can't rush the gap if you want to extract every single lesson that's available for you here. And I just do not want you to miss out on any of that.